Varanasi is probably the only place on earth where people seek to die. Many souls have purposefully travelled by foot from ages to reach Kasi only to leave their bodies there. Every seeker in this country has tried for the same, moksha. It is a state that is void of samsara yatana, otherwise called the struggle of life. No yatana of heaven, no yatana of hell, no yatana of rebirth, no yatana of marriage, reproduction, responsibilities, relentlessness. Just because you voted for a government, if the government pardons all your crimes, it's a shitty government. Similarly, just because you believed in a god, if he forgets all your atrocities, he is a shitty god. Whether you believe in him or not, he who gives you what you deserve for all your wrongdoings is Kala Bhairava. All the karma has to be washed off. This is done by him to those who die consciously in Varanasi. And what the soul goes through during these few seconds is called Bhairava Yatana. RK and I pray sincerely that he gives a taste of this Bhairava Yatana to the traitors of this motherland as we dance in ecstasy. After recovering from my traumas and seizures with the blessings of Goddess Kali, I became internally peaceful. On the outside, an ocean of waves tried to drown me into tensions, but the deep calm within helped me stabilize. Back in Pratyangira office, we set up a meeting with our new investors. Atul Rao, the politician, and Vishal Das, a competitor in some of our businesses, were sitting across my table with fake smiles. Their smiles were so fake, all the plastic surgeries around the world should be called natural. We realized by this point that these people had a hand in compromising the exhibition. We showed them our fake new paintings, claiming that they were at least 500 years old. We closed a deal with them, showing them means to profits. My uncle could drop in sponsors for the event. We knew that we had to be ready in case of a second blow. We spent almost four months in rebuilding the lost temples. Tens of sculptors showed their craftsmanship. We erected every fallen pillar and wall. We even gave a prakara with a Raja Dwara. Professionals of Agama Shastras directed the rebuild process entirely. Kala Bhairava and Kali got a buzz among the villagers. We still had least idea as to what happened that caused such destruction to the temple. The news of the miraculous temple that gave RK intelligence spread like a wildfire. All the people that threw dirt at him now looked up to him like a guru. It's not easy for a villager to get the chairperson of Pratyangira group to come down and rebuild a temple. I decided I should give the entire credit of the series of events to RK. Hence I had a sculptor sculpt RK's idol to stand forever in front of Kali, his saviour. People started climbing the mountain not just for fruits, but to see the shrine that gave knowledge. Pandits were appointed by us to perform regular pujas. The grand inauguration was announced to be in a week. Our new investors were robed in as chief guests. We had to do it for keeping up the fake smiles. Chief guests, my foot! The backstabbers didn't have the eligibility to even visit the shrine. But the lesson from Mohini Avatar taught us to keep the Rakshasas entangled till the main job is done. Seven days to open the place for public to perform rituals, an old man walked up with bare feet. His skin had wrinkles and his eyes seemed to have witnessed more history than the historians. His silver hair reflected back the golden light rays that the setting sun gave. I could see the love he held for the sculpted rocks. His affinity for the rebuilt structure quickly caught my attention. He began touching the pillars as if it were his lost and found soul. I went up to him and wanted to ask how it was. As I moved closer, his eyes gave out ears. I slowed down. 
He slowly turned to me and asked if I was the one who got enlightened at this place. I introduced RK to him. We sat in the hall of pillars post introductions. The old man traveled 100 kilometers by bus just to see this temple. But the interesting part was that this was not his first visit. He was a child of Deipur back before independence. His father was a successor of the shepherds that roamed on this mountain. Their family closely witnessed the tales that happened here. There were two factions. One was their group of shepherds. Another was a group of dairy farmers. Both factions relied on the mountain to feed their animals as it had good resources even during the summers. Every morning they would come up with herds of cattle and sheep, share regions and let their animals feed. But they had to rush back early since they would hear anklets in deep woods by late evenings. As soon as RK heard the man say this, his eyes twitched as if he knew. The shepherds believed it was goddess Kali. The dairy farmers claimed they saw ghostly figures. Both these were assumptions and they became strong beliefs by generations. So much so that the shepherds were tormented and harassed by the dairy farmers. Then the British rule came in. Like the monkey that benefited by the fight between two cats, they took their opportunity. With the same divide and rule policy they maintained throughout their authority on India, they fed lies to both factions. The shepherds were told that the dairy farmers were insulting their belief of Kali roaming the mountain. The dairy farmers were told that the other faction was spreading fake propaganda against their goddess Kali. Both were devotees of Kali, but only Britishers could ignite the differences between them. Both the factions fought in the 1850s on this very mountain. The British took this opportunity, looted the temple and destroyed it pieces by pieces. Factions realized their beloved temple was being demolished but could only save Kali temple Kala Bhairava shrine was long lost This is not just the story of one temple this is the same strategy that all the invaders use till now and the same strategy that the traitors of this country are using even today This is the story of every temple that stands in ruins. There is blood spilled on these broken walls and lives ended of those who tried to protect their shrines of worship. The Endowments Act that the rulers had imposed on Devpur exclusively forbade them from rebuilding the Kala Bhairava shrine. Eventually the rituals at this temple saw a downfall. What riches this shrine had seen were eaten bellyful by the superior whites. The faction still loved Kali in the broken shrine. Some of them still heard anklets on the mountain but never came to a conclusion as to if it was a ghost or Kali herself. Legends say that the mountain still holds the skeletons of those that died on that day on this mountain. By generations, the factions migrated to other places, some stayed back. This old man was such descendant of the shepherd's faction who held love for Kali since his childhood. His poverty did not allow him to rebuild the temple for her. But today, hearing the news that his ancestral goddess was about to regain her glory, he traveled all the way aged 82. Who built this temple in the first place? I asked curiously. RK was in deep thought. The old man took a deep breath. Some legends say it was built by the kings of the past. Some others say it was very ancient, so much so that the earliest tantras and mantras took birth here. There are rumors of mystical drums that can show you other dimensions. The tales say that the drums were used in battles that Kali was in. They show up themselves only to those who really need its power. My father used to claim to have seen the drums on these lands once. My breath increased. All of this seemed surreal. I looked at RK who still seemed to be in a state of samadhi. He clearly knew more than what he showed.
Who rebuilt this temple? The old man asked, interrupting my stream of thoughts. He did, R.K. said in a trance, pointing at me. Before I knew it, the old man dropped onto his knees and bowed his head down at my feet. This has been my lifetime dream, he said in a shaky voice. There hasn't been a day I haven't prayed for this to happen. Today, all my prayers are answered. I looked back at Kali and Kala Bhairava shrines. RK was sleeping in the Hall of Pillars by midnight. Questions upon questions kept popping in my head. Had I really seen celestial drums? I remembered hearing anklets the first evening I came onto this mountain. RK had said that it was nomads roaming around. The drum beats did heal my seizures. Was it the power of music or was it truly a mystical instrument? I experienced a trance, had visions like never before. These unanswered questions were my Bhairava Yatana. My sleeplessness forced me back to the foot of drums and see if the legends were true. I tossed a flambeau and walked deep into the forest. The age-old fort had submerged into the darkness of the night. I excavated it back to light and barged in as if I owned the place. With my might, I opened the gigantic doors of the hall. I lit a few flambeaux to see that the drums were long gone. Where are they? I asked, knowing very well that RK had followed me. He marched out of the shadows. I know that you know where they are. Who really are you? What did you do during your one month stay on the mountain? What is real? What is not? I rode, echoing the halls. Just remember, he replied. When you learn about an enlightened being, your regular logic doesn't apply to that person. I listened quietly, hoping for him to continue. The night that we came here was a new moon night. People usually perceive Amavasya as a bad omen, but it is in fact the opposite for seekers. The drums showed up on that time. We just happened to be here. I can say no more. Desperation grew within me. I trust you as a brother. We have known each other for about four months. You know everything about me, but I know just fragments of your vast experiences. I knelt down at his might. I wanted to learn of the other dimensions. I realized that the dimension we lived in was just a minute illusion of reality. I joined my hands and looked up to him with respect, saying, Teach me, RK. What all truths have you discovered? He kneeled in front of me and put his hand on my shoulder. You do not know what stature you hold. I am forever your blood brother. I'll tell you all that I know. But first, we need to play our parts. Get the exhibition right and we'll travel to other possibilities. The country's reputation is at stake. Your part is to play the chosen one. I'm your support. You are the hero. I stay the sidekick. Let's play our parts and once the curtains close, I'll show you new roles to play, he said. The need for me to resolve the lost paintings issue doubled. I asked if he could do anything to get closer to solving the problem. He stood up, posed in his usual narrative style and began speaking. I was just waiting for the right time. The case was solved a month ago. Ever since we realized three suspects, the HR, the head of sales and the secretary, I closely observed them, had conversations with them and drew conclusions. From the individual narratives that these three had given to me, I realized the secretary had different story from the other two. At first, I thought it was the secretary that was lying. The taps were broken in the bathrooms, which urged your secretary to call the plumbers. This wasn't pre-scheduled. The phone record suggests that. I met with the plumbers that came in. They said that it seemed as if the pipes were intentionally broken. But from the narrative of head of sales and HR, they tried injecting this idea into my mind that the secretary himself might have broken the pipes to bring in burglars. That gave me their agenda. 
they were not stating facts but pointing fingers at others to plant negativity in my mind. Which is what duplicitous people do. The HIS so-called family left the premises before the alarms went off. So their vehicle was not checked. But the plumbers' vehicle brought in by the secretary and the canvas cleaners' vehicle brought in by the head of sales were thoroughly checked as they left after the alarm. This only meant the canvases went out safely in the vehicle of HR's family. But how did the alarms go off after the thieves and HR left? It was the job of your dear head of sales. She went back in after the four paintings were stolen, cut a wrong wire of the fifth painting and raised an alarm. She then sent out the cleaners, making sure that the security checked them, thus clearing her name. Just the sudden break of pipes would seem doubtful. So they had broken pipes purposefully, knowing very well that the secretary would call for someone and the blame would majorly go to him. The HR anyway had left the premises before the alarms went out, leaving him out of suspicion. If I'm not wrong, the new paintings that you lied about are seen by them as a success. It doesn't matter if they believe the paintings they stole are original or not. With the new paintings, your show would still be a hit. So they should try to hit back your walls when all your family is away again, he concluded. Which will be on the day of temple inaugural, I said, just realizing. There you go, you're picking up, R.K. remarked. I felt it my duty to protect my motherland's dignity. We have brought back Kala Bhairava into his shrine. Let's also bring Bhairava Yatana to the wrongdoers, I said. On the day of inaugural, Kala Bhairava will receive pujas and respects. The HR and head of sales shall receive Bhairava Yatana. Devaraja Sevya Mana Pavanangri Pankajam Yala Yenya Sutra Mindu Shekaram Kripakaram Naradadi Yogi Brinda Vanditam Digambaram Kashika Puradina Takala Bhaira Bambhaji You have made it to six episodes, which means you have loved the content so far. Then why stay afar? You might as well subscribe and join the family. Go on, binge on the next fantabulous episode of Tenali RK. Links in the description.